this is Paul Mackey. Welcome back to the One Inch's Thoughts on Podcast. During the dog days of podcasting, this is the 13th day of August, 13th day of the dog days of podcasting. So it turns out that trivia is a good time saver only when I'm repurposing questions I've written in the past. Mostly. I did not have a weekend of light shows for celebration plus getting ahead, but it was still a little less work intensive than a regular episode. And fun, I, I hope, for you guys. Uh, so today I'm back to the more usual content, which this time is Gravity Falls Season 2, Episode 3, The Golf War. Originally aired August 11th, 2014, coincidentally exactly 10 years ago this past Sunday. A brief summary. At the start of the episode, Mabel is excited to see her article with fashion tips for squirrels appear in the morning paper, but is crushed to discover in its place an article about V-necks by her arch-nemesis Pacifica Northwest. On TV, an advertisement offers a worthy distraction, mini-golf. Dipper explains that Mabel has been an expert mini-golfer since they were nine. At the golf course, it proves true, and the windmill hole is the last step before Mabel can beat her all-time score, but after entering the windmill, the ball comes out a bad tunnel on the other side, and the ball does not go into the hole. Shortly thereafter, Pacifica's ball does go into the hole. She, too, is a mini-golf master, it turns out, and she has a personal mini-golf trainer to guide her. Mabel challenges Pacifica to a mini-golf duel, and Pacifica agrees. A duel at midnight. Stan helps the twins break into the golf course for after-hours practice at the windmill hole. Mabel puts ball after ball perfectly into the mill, but it always veers away from the hole at the other end. Dipper hears squeaking inside the mill, and they open the side of the mill, only to discover a magical village of people who are golf balls. They are Lilliputchins, a name which works much better written down. It turns out the whole course is populated by the creatures, and each hole represents a different culture or motif. Dutchmen, Frenchmen, cowboys, pirates, miners, etc. Each faction hates the others and thinks themselves the best at controlling the balls. And suddenly they are involved in an intense inter-hole melee that the twins have a hard time stopping to get an explanation. The creatures lament the inability to distinguish who is best when they notice a sticker with a trophy on it and say they all want to fight to win that sticker. It's determined whoever does the best job helping Mabel win will earn the trophy. Various hijinks ensue, with Pacifica's shots colliding with obstacles that were moved into the way. Mabel's shot favored at the pirate ship, and at the miner's hole, a creature named Big Henry is warned the hole is filled with deadly gas, but he shrugs that off and brings the ball to the elevator at the end of the hole, then looks at a picture of Polly and him that she drew, and then dies. Back at the windmill, the Dutch see Mabel gesturing as if she's about to be rewarding the miners in the end, so the Dutch hatch their own plan. Mabel frets to Dipper about feeling good at Pacifica's defeat, but Dipper says Pacifica will be all right. But just then it's revealed the Dutch creatures are ready to kill Pacifica to prove they are the best. The extremeness of this makes Mabel realize the futility of rivalries, and she makes a speech about it, saying perhaps setting aside rivalries and working together is the best victory, and she caps the speech by eating the trophy sticker. The Lilliputchins consider what she said and decide to set aside rivalries and work together to slice Mabel open and get the sticker back from inside her belly. They turn on the windmill to chopping speed, and Pacifica is slowly guided toward the blades. Dipper says they must escape, but Mabel goes back to save Pacifica, and she and Pacifica together put away all the ball creatures. In the end, they give Pacifica a ride home, and Mabel says progress was made. And then there's the We Control the Balls chorus over the credits. Very cartoonish is, of course, all the anthropomorphic balls and their associated cultural flavors, depending on their motif in the golf course. They're the part that's very cartoonish. Um, is that okay? It really felt like we were a half step away from a testicle joke the entire time. And Big Henry's on-screen death by asphyxia was a little bit much, too. My favorite line... Headlights are out. Can't really see where I'm going. 
Who is? This was a star-studded episode, clearly between what I imagine to have been an increased budget and the zeitgeist recognizing the quality of the show, they were able to make offers to bigger talent this season. I recognized Patton Oswalt as Franz and John O'Hurley as the knight right away, but I had to see Nathan Fillion as Preston Northwest, Jim Cummings as the pirate, and Frank Caliendo as Sergei in the credits, before I keyed into them specifically. I think that I'll look at Jim Cummings today as he is one of the real heavy hitters specifically in animation among all of those. Jim Cummings has been working since 1984, and while he is not exclusively under contract at Disney, a lot of his work has been with the Mouse Studio. Initially, he was used because of his ability to mimic older established performers well enough to sub in for them at times. One of the first was Sterling Holloway in the title role of Winnie the Pooh. Holloway had been slowing down work in his later years. They had a co-star fill in on one short in 1981, and Sterling Holloway retired from Pooh in the mid-1980s. Jim Cummings took over full-time in 1988 and also assumed other Holloway roles, such as Ka in Jungle Book sequels in games. He also gradually filled in for and eventually replaced Paul Winchell as Tigger. He alternated with Peter Cullen on Rescue Rangers and played King Triton in a Little Mermaid sequel when Kenneth Mars was too ill to reprise the role. Jim Cummings and Jeremy Irons share a singing credit in The Lion King for the song Be Prepared, as Irons had developed a vocal issue. He originated smaller characters for both Rescue Rangers and Tailspin, originated the character of Darkwing Duck, and he has variously performed in the Scooby-Doo, Tom and Jerry, and Star Wars franchises. He played the Captain of the Guard for Lord Farquaad in Shrek, and also performed in The Road to El Dorado, and played several parts in Curious George. To which I begin to say, well, hasn't everybody... Last year, Jim Cummings started Tuned In with Jim Cummings, a podcast in which he discusses his roles over the years and features other voice actors as guests. So what worked? I think this counts as both a pro and a con this time. The episode was a creature feature one-off, and it was a whimsical distraction from the plot-heavy stories of the first two episodes. Plus, the absolute insanity of the second half of the episode totally redeemed the slightly slower start of the episode. What didn't work? I understand this is more of a Monster of the Week episode, and those are probably necessary given both the general ideally children's audience and the number of episodes in a season. Still, I think there was virtually nothing to tie into the overarching storyline unless it turns out the Northwest family are a pivotal part of that. Things to ponder. I wonder if they'll have any other mundane sights in real life that have been taken over by some personification of whatever might normally be inside. So next time is Gravity Falls, Season 2, Episode 4, Sock Opera, Living Sock Puppets. Okay, well, that's just a guess, but after today's episode, anything could be possible. Happy hunting! You've been listening to the One Idget's Thoughts On podcast, produced by Paul Mackey in association with Nimlas Studios. Any short clips of audio from shows is included under fair use for commentary purposes, and copyright for that content remains with its original copyright holders. The theme song is Too Good by Jack Mangan, and is used by his generous permission. One Idget's Thoughts is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. You can find more episodes of this podcast and many other fine podcasts at nimlast.org. You can contact me by emailing idgetcastpodcast at gmail.com or commenting on episodes at nimlast.org. Yeah, nobody works the balls like we do. We handle the balls so well. Give your balls a tug. Yeah, they pretty much said 85% of all those sentences. Well, maybe not the last one.